Do you want to start recording? Okay. Just a so, suggestion. Keep keep uh, everybody muted. There, Areem. I think when there's two of your mics are on, it's there's echo or like a sound behind. Okay. So first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. My name is Rabia. I'm a part of NHS and part of the development committee. So a, one of our jobs is to prepare you guys for what you can expect in the coming years of high school. And now with me, I have Reem. She'll introduce herself. Hi, my name is Reem. I'm the president of NHS. Um, and like Rabia said, I'm also a part of the development committee. Um, we really hope that, you know, these presentations are going to help you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, let's save them to the end or just keep them in the chat and we'll answer them as we go along. Um, and then um, we can get started. So today's presentation is specifically about the college application process. Um, and it's never too early to start, whether you're a sophomore or a junior. Uh, and we're going to take you through all of the steps. So there are three main components to your college application, and we'll be describing each one today for you guys. So the first one is picking where you want to apply. So you wanna make sure that you explore all your options where it is possible for you to attend, where you want to attend, what colleges you're interested in, and you wanna basically make a list for yourself of everywhere you want to apply. The second part is completing the actual application, and that will look different for every college you wanna to apply to, and there are steps to that also. So that will be the main, that will be the bulk of your application process. Well, that's a big part. There's also, the last step is also a big part of your uh, college application is doing your FAFSA and applying for any scholarships. So FAFSA is federal student aid, like from the government, and you'll have to fill out a form to do that online. And then scholarships, we'll dive deeper into that later on. Like Fabia said, the first place that you want to do is you want to pick to uh, you want to pick where you want to apply. Um, something that um, I think we can both vouch for is taking risks and not doubting yourself. Even if you're a little bit scared to apply to like a college that's considered you know uh, better or one of the best colleges in Michigan, you never know what can happen. Um, take that risk and just send in your application. But um, Regardless of that, make sure to research what colleges work for you and your goals and interests. If you're interested in engineering, um, then maybe U of M Ann Arbor might be better than Wayne State. Or if you're interested in nursing, um, then it, make, it might make more sense to go to Henry Ford uh, versus Macomb Community College. So it's important to kind of sit down, think about what you want to do in the future and what schools are going to work the best for you. You also want to stay realistic in terms of geography and tuition. Um, and talk to your parents to understand what's going to work for your family. If you can only afford, you know, you might only be able to afford to go to a community college or um, to go somewhere closer to home. And um, you might not have your driver's license. So by putting these all into consideration, it makes it, makes it easier to find what works for you. Um, and then once you finalize the list, you want to understand the application requirements for each school. So if let's say you decide that you want to apply to Wayne State, U of M Dearborn, U of M Ann Arbor, and Henry Ford, you need to sit down and understand what each school requires um, so that, because, so now all of these schools work for you, you need to figure out what you need to do for each school um, in order to have the best chance at getting in um, and, you know, make it an option for the future. So the next part of the college application process is completing your actual application to the colleges you want to apply to. So the parts of your application that will be considered are first your academics, so your grades, your GPA. This information will be sent to the colleges by um, the counselors, so either Ms. Bush or Ms. Lafra. Family information, these are things that the college will, the questions they'll have you complete. They'll ask about your parents, how many siblings you have, what kind of education do your, like for an example, what education levels do your parents have? You know, did they graduate high school? Do they have a bachelor's? Whatever that may be. Um, and just more information about you in general. They'll also ask, like we discussed at our events before, what activities you did. So what kind of clubs were you in in, in school? 
like NHS, student government, anything that you have done, you're, you're going to put it in there. And then you will have to write your personal essays. So each college will have different essay questions that you will have to answer. Uh, they might have one, they might have a few. Some of the, some colleges have more like four or five. It all just depends. But, you know, just expect that writing essays will be something that you will have probably most likely have to do some at some point in your college application process. And it, the colleges usually change it every year. So, and when you guys start like your senior year, or maybe, um, yeah, when you start your junior, uh, senior year, or even over the summer, you can probably just like go online and look up the essay questions and get a head start because they usually do post them online and you can find them online. And then the, one of the last things will be getting letters of recommendation. So that could be from people in your community. Maybe there's somebody that you've done a lot of work for that can vouch for you and your skills and what you've done and what kind of person you are. Most of the time it will be a teacher from your school. So getting recommendations from a teacher that you know, that knows you well, that will, you know, write a good recommendation for you, a strong letter of recommendation, or it could be um, a coach, a mentor, somebody who knows you very well. So there's two ways that you can do your college application. Um, and the first one is uh, through the college's website. Um, you usually have to make an account using your email and then you complete the whole process through their platform or through their dashboard. Um, it's gonna ask you to send SAT scores. That'll be separate. You'll send them through College Board, write your application and essays. Um, and you can also add your teachers and recommenders um, so that they can send their uh, recommendations and put in information. This is recommended for if you want to apply to Wayne State because when you apply through the website method, they answer you easier, um, but it doesn't always work for each college and some colleges don't necessarily have this option available. So the other way that you could apply to colleges is using Common App. So this is a very popular website or app used by students who want to apply to colleges. It's highly, I would highly recommend it to all of you. So it's basically a website where you can apply to multiple colleges and it basically puts all your stuff in one place. So you log in, you log, you make an account and when you log in, you can see all the colleges you're applying to and it will show you all of the requirements that you need to fulfill. So it's super organized and it makes it easy for you and it make, kind of helps you make sure that you're not missing anything. So you just add colleges that you want to apply to and it'll get the application process started for you. It'll walk you through each step and list all the requirements. So it'll have you, it'll give you a place like where should you put your activities? And then it'll give you an option to add teachers. So you add your teacher name and their email and it'll email them for you and it, it'll send them an email where it tells them, okay, this student wants you to write them a letter of recommendation. Um, if you have any questions about that, you know, you could always ask your teachers. I know a lot of them have probably done this process before, like Mr. Tangway, he has done that before for me, for Reem. So he, there are also teachers you can ask about that. And then you can, for the transcript part, you will add Ms. Bushra or Ms. Afra, probably, probably Ms. Bushra. You just add your email in there and they'll get the email and they'll take care of all your transcripts. You won't have to worry about that. It's just a very good way to stay organized and make the whole process a lot easier for you. So just to give you guys an idea what that looks like, I'm gonna pause this real quick and show you the website. Let me just stop sharing for a second. I'm gonna open up the common app so you guys can see it. Also, just like always, um, we're gonna share resources and we're going to share this recording so that you guys um, can have them for the future. Um, so don't worry if you like miss anything. We'll share everything at the end as well. Yeah. So this is my account. I'm already I just logged in real quick. So right. So Wayne State, like we said earlier, I applied to Wayne State separately on their website. That that will be. They have their own dashboard, which is pretty easy to use. You guys shouldn't have problems with that. And then for EMU and U of M, I did, uh, I applied on common. So you can, you know, show more details and then you go to my colleges like this over here, open up EMU, 
it'll have questions over here to answer. Here you can add recommenders. Then you like review and submit your application. It's very good. It also like it'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? Over here, it'll show you show you all their application deadlines. So you could do regular admit, which is usually due, your application will probably be due in like March around that time, or you could do early admission, which is usually around December, maybe even November, it depends. But I'll, it'll show you all your deadlines, application information for all of this stuff. So I'll show you down here, it'll show you here are the essays you need to write here, are the questions you need to answer. And you just basically click on whatever college application you want to work on on this side, and it'll tell you everything you need to do and you will submit it at the end on this website. Super easy and it'll make the process a lot easier for you. So again, that's, yeah, like Reem said, just search Common App. And now, let's take us back to the presentation. Let's talk about general tips or um, things that have made the process easier for us. Um, the biggest thing for me was starting my application during the summer. Um, I know we were talking about what we want to do during the summer, but I think this is really important. Senior year is going to be more hectic than you expect. You're only going to have three classes or you're, you might have more, um, but it's not going to be as relaxed um, as most people expect it. There's going to be extra activities for seniors. You also have your capstone project. So it's easier to do it during the summer, to start your application during the summer, because you'll be able to sit down and really focus on it. Um, you can also ask, make sure to ask teachers for advice or for them to proofread your essays. They're also going to be more avail available during the summer. During the school year, they have their normal responsibilities, but during the summer, they have a lot less and they'll be, it'll be easier for them to give you more time and to actually work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The other thing is be very considerate of teachers. Um, if you need a recommendation letter, don't ask them a week before you need it. <laughs> make sure to give them at least like a, at least a month in advance so that they're aware they can actually have time to write it um, and fit it into their schedule. And also before you ask a teacher, make sure they're willing to write one. You know, sometimes teachers have a lot of stuff going on and they really, they won't even have the time to write one. Write one. And like Reem was saying, um, if you get kind of like your process started over the summer, you'll most likely be free, you know, halfway through the school year, and then you'll have more time to like work on your capstone because that's also another thing you'll have to put effort on. So some more general tips that we wanted to give you are attending workshops and events held by the colleges you wanna attend will be super helpful. So Wayne State, U of M, EMU, Oakland, Macomb, Wayne Community College, all of these colleges, like just the local ones and other, all the, most of the colleges will hold events where you can come and talk to admissions people and you get, they'll, you'll be able to ask them questions. So these are events tailored just for people who want to, who are looking to apply. So make sure that if you see that they're holding an event, check their website and or any work workshop, please try to attend because it'll be super helpful than trying to figure it out on your own. And if you have questions, you can ask those people directly. Ms. Bushra, or Ms. Afra, they also hold a lot of workshops. They connect to many people from colleges to help you guys out. So utilize those resources that they're trying to put together for you. It'll be very helpful. Even for like the FAFSA uh, application process, Ms. Fisher and Ms. Afra had like workshops running at one point, like every single week. So you could just come in the meeting. They even had an option earlier to come to the school and they're literally help you with the whole process. It doesn't take long, but if you do need help, the help is there. Um, there's also other things like virtual tours. So, you know, if you want to get to know a campus very well, those are also very good resources. And, you know, in the time of COVID, this part is actually very beneficial for you guys because not everything is online. You can easily find those resources. So like, let's say you can't get the chance to go to the U of M campus or the Henry Ford or Wayne State. There are a lot of options like virtual tours and there's, there's just so much more information you can find online now. And another big thing is don't be afraid to ask for ask for help or ask somebody if you have any questions. At the same time, obviously you should still be respectful and considerate. Don't be emailing them um, 
you know, right before something is due and then expect them to help you with something, you know, give them time, like we said before. But yeah, you can ask Ms. Busha, ask Ms. Afra. They know a lot. They know basically everything and they can help you with your applications. But just know that they are also very busy. They have to handle so many things at the school. So just give them time and know that they are also very busy. And another option that's also good is reaching out to people that you know that attended that are attending the schools you want to apply to. So there are a lot of students who will be going to Wayne State next year. So you could get um, get in touch with somebody who's at Wayne State. Me and Reem will be at U of M and you guys, you know, we have you have our emails and we'll be more than willing to help. So that won't be an issue. But yeah, that's also a very helpful resource, getting that firsthand experience from somebody who's already there. No problem. Okay, so for financial aid and scholarships, the biggest thing is to complete FAFSA as soon as possible. Um, honestly, I think that's the most important thing before even your application, um, because federal for a lot of federal aid, it's first come first serve. So federal aid is any aid or any um, funds, grants and loans that come from the federal government. So they come from the state of Michigan or they come from um, like, like the US obviously, so from the government. Um, so because it's first come first service, you need to fill that form, you need to complete your FAFSA as soon as possible. Those, the more, the later that you do it, the less money that um, you could poten potentially get. So FAFSA is, um, I'm not sure what it stands for, but it's basically the, how much money the government or the state of Michigan can help you, can help, can give you to help pay for your college tuition. So when you fill it, you have to fill it out every October so that they can see based off of how much money you make. So they see if you're eligible and for how much. So if your family makes a certain amount, um, FAFSA might be able to give you a certain amount or to cover a certain amount of your tuition. Um, and that obviously it's it's literally free money because they're, they're offering to help you pay for your college based off of how much your family makes. Now, a big scholarship that, um, that a lot of frontier students apply for and usually get is the Detroit Promise. And it's for any high school seniors who've attended a high school in Detroit, frontier is a high school in Detroit and have lived in Detroit for um, at least their senior, their junior and senior year. If you've lived for all of high school, um, you can also be eligible for all four years of your college tuition covered. Uh, this one, this process is a little bit easier to apply for, and it's not as like fat. You don't have to do it as fast as FAFSA, um, but Ms. Bushra will have all the information you need um, to know whether you're eligible for Detroit Promise and how to apply. And like I said, it's a lot of these FAFSA and Detroit Promise are relatively easy, and they don't require like require extra work like recommendation letters um, and essays. So if you are eligible for them, you should automatically go for them 100%. I'm gonna just answer a couple questions in the group chat. Um, I think Robbie got that last one. So if you're in tenth grade, um, you have you can wait to apply for college. I would do it in the beginning of your senior year, the summer before your senior year, because that's when applications open for you. If you apply before, then they're gonna think that you're going to college that next year, if that makes sense. Um, so if you're in tenth grade right now and you apply, they're gonna think that you want to come in before then and you also won't have everything you need for your application your gpa won't be finalized because you're still in school you won't have all the credits you need um so wait till your senior year and then medium if you don't like common app there's also coalition app i think that's what it's called that's another um app that you can try but they they're relatively the same go ahead rabia or if you really don't like any of those you could try to apply it directly on their website if that's an option for the colleges so financial aid and scholarships going into that more. So there are different types of scholarships you can apply for. There are private scholarships, federal scholarships like from the government and institutional institutional scholarships. And there are many lists online. You could literally look up scholarships and you'll find like a bunch of them to apply. So and they vary. They could be small amounts to larger amounts, but if it is possible for you, you should apply to as many as possible. Cause again, like Reem said, it's free money. And if you get it, you get it. You're getting money for yourself and something to help you pay for college. There's also a big list that Ms. Bushra will share. There's a long list that she always sends and you can apply to any of those on that list. Just be aware that, you know, different scholarships have many different requirements and 
uh, you have, you know, essays, letters of recommendations, activities, and they also have different um, deadlines. So some of them will end, the deadline will be early in the school year. Some of them you can still apply to later on. So just be aware of that. And then also after you apply to colleges, you may get offered scholarships or aid from the college themselves. Maybe for, you know, they recognize that maybe you're somebody who needs it. Maybe it's from your grades. So after you apply, they'll usually um, the college of like their student aid office will probably send you an email or a letter in the mail and it'll tell you it'll give you like a breakdown of how much money you would need to pay and at that time they may offer you some aid and scholarship from themselves from the college themselves also a lot of schools have scholarships um Robbie, do you mind going back really quick i wanted to add something but a lot of schools will also have scholarships that you can apply for once you're in so like maybe in your second or third year at like let's say you go to Henry Ford, they have internal scholarships, which like Robbie said, are institutional scholarships. Um, private scholarships are usually scholarships that like an organization um, wants to give, wants to help students. So they'll host their own scholarship that's not connected to the government or, or, a, or an institution or a school. One thing I will say though, is applying to scholarships isn't easy. It's a lot of work, but like we said, it's free money and it's worth it. And if you can, if like after a few, once you apply to a few, it gets easier. Um, and as long as you have the help of like a teacher to, you know, apply, I think everyone should really, really try to apply for scholarships because um, it could be $1,000 just in your pocket for free. Um, and all you have to do is work on an essay for some of them. So during the process, you really need to check your email because that's going to be the main way of communication for all of your applications for even the scholarships that you apply for. Um, and the other thing is, I know some of us have emails that are like cutie for life 116, you know, um, I genuinely recommend getting a new email if that's if you have an email that's similar to that, because, like we said, your email is going to be the primary form of communication. So if it says cutie 100, they're going to be like, who is this cutie like this is you know, it's not very professional. So if you do have, um, if you do have kind of an email like that, maybe think about making a new email that has like, for example, if your name is ML, maybe ML, um, ML at gmail.com or ML21 at gmail.com. Um, that makes you seem more professional and they're not gonna be as weirded out, weirded out by it. But like I, like I was saying, all of your college applications are your responses are going to be to your emails, your scholarship, it's going to be communicated through your email. So make sure to frequently check it um, and check your spam as well, because a lot of things end up there um, and always be available for that type of communication. FAFSA, um, I think this name asked FAFSA, you apply through the FAFSA website in your senior year. So um, it's you literally just type in FAFSA and you can, you can log in, you create an account and you um, fill it out through there. And just know for the FAFSA, um, you would probably need like to have your parents with you because because it is based on, you know, how much your parents make or what your parents do. You'll need like your parents taxes, how much money they make, things like that. So it'll be something you need to do with your parents. And for talking about uh, being available and also expect you'll get a lot of emails from like a bunch of colleges. It's just a normal part of the process. I'm still getting emails every day from colleges, even though I already decided where I'm going, I'm already done applying, but just expect that it's not a big deal and just check it often. Also, one last and thing. And just like applying. Oh, sorry, Rabia. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, do not use your GE email. Do not use your school email. Use your personal email because GE, they're most likely going to discontinue it after you graduate. So anything that anything that you're applying, because when you're in college, you're not going to be using GE email anymore. So they need you need to use an email that you're going to be using for the next 10 years, hopefully. So do not use any temporary emails like your school email um, or like emails that you have for, if you like work for some for somewhere and you have like an email for that organization, use your personal email, okay? Yep, and your college may have you make like an email for their college after that, but you still need to have that backup personal email that will be with you for years to come and it's not gonna go away or, you know, make sure you know the password, you have all your things in order with that. And we just want to end off on hopefully an inspiring note and to say, we know that the process can be stressful. We've been through it ourselves. 
And so it's very important to, at the same time, put aside time to relax and enjoy some free time. You know, even if you want to get started this summer, you know, you don't have to grind and put yourself through so much work. Also enjoy your summer. And even when the school year starts, make sure you have time to relax because if you're just going to stress yourself about it the whole time, you will be miserable. And just know that the more you plan now and the more you're, you start preparing now, the easier it will be for you later. That's why we always encourage you guys to get started if earlier if you can. And, you know, being here is a good way to get started so you know what you can expect. So thank you for coming. And hopefully this was helpful and that will help you hopefully be ready for what's to come later. And remember that you're not going to get into every college you want to. You know, if you might get into everything, you, you might get into the college you want, you may not. So just be prepared for that and know that there are so many other paths to get to where you want to be. So if you don't get into one college, you can attend a different one and you can still get the same degree that you want to do and get a job in the same field if that's what you want. And there are many different ways to get to where you want to be. You know, we know how that feels to not get into everywhere you want, maybe not getting into the program that you wanted to, but there are so many other ways to achieve what you want to what, what you want to get to. And just don't stress out if you don't if that happens to you. And just remember you guys got this. Enjoy the summer and come back ready to have the best senior year. You guys will be better off because hopefully you'll be in person and not attending Zoom meetings all day. But just, um, yeah, Let's see what are people saying in the chat? I just hope that this was helpful for you guys. And so now, if you have questions, please type them um, in the chat or you can unmute. And again, if you ever need to contact us, um, those are our emails and Reem. Do you want to share that doc on the chat? So can you actually go to that link? Um, so we covered a lot of things in today's meeting, but there's so much more to the process. Um, but Raibi is going to go to this website that I'll also share with everyone. Um, these are resources that I created because um, I, I like to have steps written out. Um, so this has all of the steps written out one by one. Can you move yourself just so there isn't like an echo? But um, this is going to have everything that we talked about. Rabia, thank you for sharing it in the group chat. Um, you can click on any of them, and it's going to take you step by step through each of um, the process. So for example, um, everything you need to know about requesting letter of recommendation, uh, what timeline you should kind of follow. You can actually click on the college application timeline. That one's a good example. So everything that we talked about and even more, um, more in detail is going to have is going to be um, in this document. So I'm going to make sure that Ms. Bushra emails this out to everyone as well as this presentation, um, so that you guys can have this resource and hopefully share it with, you know, your friends, and you'll also have it for you know your younger siblings hopefully. So like Rabia said, if anyone has any questions, put them in the chat. Um, Tisneem raised her hand. You can go ahead. Yeah, you said about capstone. What's that? Uh, so capstone is in senior year, you do like a project. Um, it's a graduation requirement. And so capstone can be where it's all about like learning a new skill or learning something new. So capstone is your senior, it's gonna be your senior uh, project. And it's also gonna be a class that you take in your senior year. Um, so it could be like learning about a new career, trying, learning a new skill, whatever project you decide to do, that's basically what you're going to be spending a lot of your senior year in or working on, sorry. Um, it's, Robbie, would you say, I wouldn't say capstone is hard, but it's a lot of work. It's, it has a lot of components to it. So it does yeah. take a year to work on. Like capstone is basically, it's more just, you have to be willing to put in the time to get it done, but it's really not hard because you know, no matter what you choose, like, let's say you want to learn a new skill, it doesn't have to be like, I'm going to learn how to paint. And you don't have to be, you know, Bob Ross by the end of it, you don't have to be this big super artist at the end. It's just, did you put, they just want to see, did you put in the work to be, you know, improve your skills? Do you want to see your progress? So you don't have to be amazing at the skill that you want to learn. And if you do career exploration, I mean, it's really just learning about the career more whatever you want to know you just have to learn about it more and then the comp complete the other caps and requirements it's really not hard it's just it's just you know putting in the time Justine? 
Ra Rabia and, and Reem, uh, I just want to, I don't want to disrespect your time. I have to step away for a second because I know it, it's a question's time. So in, in case it ends before I come back, um, just feel free to to end the meeting. But I'm, I'm, I apologize, but there's just so much going on that I, I, I just have to step away for a second. That's okay. Okay. Christine, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, it's about the scholarship. Can we see like how much we got or those things? When you do the application, they ask you about the scholarship or those things. How can we see it? The SAT, those things. Um, I can kind of answer that. So you're not gonna know what scholarship you get until after you apply. So like once you apply to Wayne State and they accept you, so they'll send you an email in your acceptance letter. They'll tell you that you're going to, you're going to be awarded if you are getting a scholarship. Granted, not everyone's going to be offered a scholarship, but if you are in your application letter, I'm sorry, in your acceptance letter, they'll say that you've been rewarded the Heart of Detroit scholarship or you've been awarded a merit scholarship. A merit scholarship is a scholarship that you get if you have really good grades in the school once um, wants to reward you for that. Um, and then so that's how you'll know if you got a scholarship from the school itself. FAFSA um, is a little bit different. So like when you fill out FAFSA, they'll tell you your uh, estimated family contribution, which is how much they think your family will have to contribute to your college, up your college to um, cost. It'll tell you if it's temp if it's like 10%, then that's most likely how much you have to pay. FAFSA will cover 90%. Um, the other thing to think about for like scholarships is that um, it's never just one thing that's, it's never one, it's never just federal or institution that's completely covering your scholarship. There's different levels, um, but they all work together to hopefully get your balance to zero. So like if you get a scholarship from this school, financial aid, um, also FAFSA, it'll all come together. Not one of them isn't going to cover everything, if that makes sense. So they'll all work together so that, and then whatever you contribute to get your balance to zero, if that makes sense. Okay, last question. For these things, like with, uh, the help, like they give you those scholarship or these things, should you like pay it back? <clears throat> pay it back, like give them the money they give us? Um, so if you get a scholarship from like an organization or something like that, you don't have to pay back the money because it's the whole idea is that they're trying to give it away so that people can use it for a better cause. Um, yeah, so you don't have to, unless it's a loan, which is very, very different. And we, unless a, a loan is when you borrow money, it's not that you're getting it as as a reward. And how about, the, how about the F, uh, the FAS? FAFSA? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to pay that back. The only money you have to pay back is if you take a loan. Um, and a loan is when you borrow money from a person, from, a, from the government, from a college. That's going to be different. Um, I don't have experience with that. You might have to ask someone who has taken out a loan. Most people choose not to because it's it's um, it's a lot harder. Um, okay, but... if you do the application like um, with your parents or these things, like the application for the credit card or the numbers, should we do like my dad, not us? What do you mean by that? Like. You know, when you do the application, they ask you the numbers, the house, those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. So whoever is the primary provider, so whoever brings in the most money in your family. For some people, it's their mom. For some people, it's their dad. Whoever brings in the money in the family or your older brother. For example, some people, their parents don't work because of disability or other issues or other um, reasons. So their older brother is a primary provider, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Rabia, do you want to answer the questions in the chat? Um, okay, somebody said if someone lives in Yemen and has a Bachelor of Aviation wants to come to America to study, what should this person do? Um, I'm not really sure you would have to see like what, because the thing is it different countries, the whole um, education requirement is different. So like if you want to work in aviation here, the requirements and the testing and the skills you have to have are probably going to be different than Yemen. So that's not something that we know anything about. but. You will have to, that person will just have to look into the requirements. I'm really not sure on that, sorry. Someone's asking um, how much of an SAT score do you need? And um, your you little quiet. Go mm -hmm. ahead, yeah. No, you're, you're sounding a little quiet. Oh, I was saying, so someone asked in the chat, um, 
what SAT score do we need? So if you want to answer that. Oh, okay. So for SAT, um, it really just depends on the college requirement. And there's many other factors that the college looks at besides your SAT. So you have to see what kind of requirements that the college requires. There's, I wouldn't say there's any one number that you need to have. It just depends where, which college you wanna to go to and what kind of scores do they expect. And remember that you guys still have, um, you guys still have time to take your SAT. So you could still take it over the summer. You could take it in fall of your senior year, as long as you take it on time and give yourself enough time like to send the score to your colleges. Don't take it like the week or even like don't take it within the month where the application is due, but take it on time and you can increase your score or improve it if you need to. But it really just depends what college you want to go to and what kind of scores they require. And also just because a school has like, for example, U of M, sometimes U of M and Arbor, they'll put their average SAT score of the incoming class as like being like 1300, for example, you should still apply even if you have a third, if you don't have a 1300, because um, like Robbie said, there's more factors that go into your application. Um, and some schools are better at doing like a holistic review, like they'll look at, um, like for example, it's expected that students in Detroit aren't necessarily going to have the same SAT scores as students in Bloomfield Hills because of the education system is different, right? So they're gonna look at different factors. Um, but there's very, I would say it's very rare, like it's more rare for them to be like, we have this score and you need to have it to meet, to get into our school, if that makes sense. So I got another message. Um, should we apply for both FAFSA and another scholarship in college? Yes, 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 yes. Apply for FAFSA. And then if there are other scholarships that you are eligible for, apply to them as well, because FAFSA might not cover everything. Um, and if you do get other scholarships and they aren't used, like you're awarded them, they'll give you that money at the end of the school year. It's called the refund check. So like, let's say Rabia applied for a scholarship and she got $1,000. Um, and she didn't, her, at the end of the semester, she didn't end up using it. Um, the school will just give it back to her. And so that's like, if you don't use it for your school, then you just get like a free check at the end of the semester. Um, so yeah, are there any other questions? Because I'm not seeing any. Yeah, if you have any Can questions, please. Yeah, go ahead, somebody's talking. So I don't know, if, um, like it's not related to college application, but I really want to know, you know, you guys are going to college, you guys are just like, you know, you already decided what you want to become or like what you were going to college to study for. How do you decide that? Good question, Sanjita. Um, well, um, one I thing I will say is, mind. sorry, are you saying something? I, because I said I have so much things in mind and I cannot decide, like, you know, I sat down a couple of times because so many people advised me, like, you know, sit down and see what you like, what you dislike, but you know, I, when I try to do that, I come down to like so many things that I like, I want to study, but I cannot decide one. So how do you guys decide the one thing? So um, the first thing I would say is, you don't have to decide right now what you want to do. There are a lot of people in college who have no idea what they're going to study. Reem, Reem is one. I've asked, I've been asking her this past school year, hey, do you have an idea of what you want to major in? She has no idea. Do you know what you want to be? She has no idea. So if you don't know what you want to do right now, just relax. It's not a big deal. You don't have to know. I'm not even sure what I want to major in. Like I know where I'm gearing towards, but there are so many options in college and you will be able to see that in college. So when you take certain classes during like your first couple of years, you will get an idea of, you know, what are the options? What kind of careers you're interested in? So it really just, it do, it's okay if you don't know yet. And a, a lot of people who are in college ha, don't know or they change their minds even while you're in college. So it's really not a big deal if you don't know. And it's not something that you should be worried about right now. But when like the time comes and you're, you know, and you're in college, hopefully you'll know what you want to do. And in the end, you figure out what you want to do. You want to add anything to that, Reem, from personal experience? Very indecisive person. <laughs> so I relate to that a lot. Um, you don't have to decide what your major is to like your junior year of college. So like Rabia said, if you have like, if you're thinking of nursing or you're thinking of biology, take those classes because the first two years are, of college are usually just general classes. Take a class in the major that you're maybe considering. 
Um, that's my plan at least. <laughs> And that'll give you an idea. So for example, if you're interested in law, maybe take like an introduction to law class in your first year and you might take it and you might realize you really, really hate it or you realize you really, really like it. Um, the other thing is just get to know yourself more. For, for example, a few years ago, I didn't know that I really liked community work or that um, I liked you know, being creative. Um, and so now that I've learned more about myself, I kind of know what to avoid. Like. I'm not very good at memorization. I'm not really interested in biology. So I know that maybe the medicine, the medical field isn't for me, not interested in it. So you can rule it, rule it out, sorry. Um, so get to know yourself and it's easier to cross things off than to like find an option. So the more things that you take off, like if you realize you're just not interested in it, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, I got a message. What is the golden scholarship that Wayne State is giving to students? I don't, I don't know if there's a scholarship called the golden scholarship, but um, a lot of students do get like the heart of Detroit. So if you're from Detroit, um, they'll offer you free tuition for four years. Um, I think that's the major one. And then Detroit Promise, those are the two big ones from Wayne State. But I will say Wayne State is really affordable because um, they, they offer a lot of scholarships regardless of how much your family makes. So um, it's a great school for people from like people from all over Michigan go there because they make it, they want you to be there and they make it easier. Um, to do that. So Wednesday, it's really great because they're fine. They're, um, they give, a, they give a lot of scholarships and, um, the scholarships are really easy to get. Um, the same, you have so, your hand up. Oh, go ahead, Robbie. Sorry. I was just going to say something. Um, I think what the person was talking about was the gold award. Um, I just looked it up right now real quick. Cause you know, different colleges have different names for their scholarships. Like Eastern Michigan has like Emerald and different ones. So everything is different. So the gold award for Wayne State is you get up to $4,000 per year um, for your four years of study there. And you have to commit, you have to uh, uh, submit an application by a certain date. So that might change. And so they, and then also keep in mind, I don't think we mentioned this. If you get a scholarship from a, from the university you want to attend, they will have certain requirements that you have to maintain over the course of your four years to keep your scholarship. So they'll keep giving you money. So for the gold award, it's saying you need to keep a minimum of 3.0 GPA at Wayne State. So you have to maintain that. Otherwise, they will stop giving you the money. You have to maintain full time enrollment. So you can't say I'm going to take a year off. You have to keep going there consistently for four years and pass a certain amount of credits every school year. So also be aware that if you get a scholarship, you also have to maintain certain requirements so that they keep giving you the money. Justine, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, you know, when you said about the clubs, they will less. You cut off, sorry, I didn't hear you. Could you um, type it in the chat? I think that'll make it easier. We can try to answer it then. Does anyone else have any questions? Just put them in the chat or raise your hand. Yeah, when you said about the club uh, and the active for, they will ask you on the information on the application. How can we know like what club should we enjoy the active? So for activities or clubs, really just do whatever you feel like doing. We talked about this before. I don't know if you were there, but it's fine if you weren't. Um, just what you feel like doing. And if you're somebody who, um, so you could really join or do community service to join any activity at school. Or if you're somebody who already kind of has an idea of what they want to do. So like for me, I'm already kind of um, interested in bio biological fields. So if you know kind of what you're interested in, try to join a club or do an activity that relates to that a little bit. But it really is whatever you want to do and everything you do that you just write it down and you write down whatever clubs you were in or whatever activities you did. Okay. We also have a presentation on that. Um, I'll make sure to share it with you guys as well. Um, I'll share everything that we talked about today. So does anyone have any final questions before we wrap up? Um, also a student requested that I do this presentation in Arabic. <laughs> So if you're interested in that, um, send me an email and I'll send you the link afterwards. Um, and you're more than welcome to join. 
is it better to go for medical field or IT field? Which one is developing more? Um, I can't say which one is developing more. I think IT because it's technology, it's always changing. But a lot of the medical field involves, you know, technology and innovation. So um, I feel like they're both changing. Maybe IT is changing faster, but again, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't know about whether which one's better. Medical field, you're always guaranteed jobs just because there's such a need for it. Um, IT, well, it's not as in demand, I guess. Um, but I think it's really what you want to do. Um, and by the way, it's never, a lot of the times when you learn about careers, it's like IT or medicine or education, but you literally can do a mix of both. Like I know a lot of people who work in the medical field, but have like a master's in technology and they use both of those degrees together. Um, so much, like I said, of the medical field involves technology. Everything that's in the hospital is technology. And so when you understand, when you have experience in both, that makes you, um, that makes you even more valuable to a company or organization because um, you can use both of those uh, fields to you know, find the best resources and results and create new things. Um, Rabia, do you wanna to add to that? Yeah, I mean, it really just comes down to what you wanna do. Because and there's like so many different options for medical or like working in it, working in technology. Because you know it's it's a very broad field. There's so many things you could do. It really just comes down to what you really enjoy, because that's what you should pick in the end, and just go for what you want. You know, it shouldn't be what somebody else tells you to do or whatever. And like she said, like there are people who are um, engineers, you know, really smart people, and then they but they work in the medical field, like they develop medical equipment, you know, things that are always changing in medicine, like new ways to do surgery, new MRI, x-ray machines, all those kind of things. So there's a lot of ways you can combine two fields. Um, two people have their hand up. Um, Tasneem, go ahead. No. Okay, um, Nada, you can go ahead. Yeah, if my English is not really good, can I can I go to college or I have to stay one year like learning English to be really good in English? Reem? I can answer that. So um, what a lot of colleges do is they'll have you take like a placement test before um, so that they can put you in the proper classes. But there's, I don't think that you're going to lose a year um, of your education just because you don't speak English well. A lot of colleges do have classes for English, um, like ESL learners or, um, sorry, my family's been around the background, but um, there's this misconception of that, like, like you have to use a year or two for language. I think, I don't think that's true, but I haven't had that experience. But like I said, most colleges will have you take a placement test if you get in. Um, though your English classes will just be um, catered to your level. It is going to be harder, I'm not going to lie, because, you know, uh, college classes in America are usually developed for students who speak English well. Um, but, I mean, I don't doubt your ability to work hard and um, to get, you know, to get your work done and really challenge yourself. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you so much. I got another question. Where does the scholarship money get saved? So once you get accepted to a school um, and whatever scholarships they offer, all of your financial aid and all of your scholarships, whether they're from the state, like federal, or they're um, from the school itself, will get, will get sent to the school. So the school is most likely going to have, because they're obviously, that's where you're paying them, right? Um, but uh, for a lot of schools, once you um, get accepted you and you sign into like your school account, you can go in and see um, where, how your tuition is covered, where you have to pay and where all of your scholarship money is coming. So um, when that time comes, you can also ask a student that is at that school to help you kind of um, find out where that, um, where that uh, tab is and stuff. The same, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, you know, when they send you about like colleges in your email, how can we like, uh, and you give, they give you like information about college. Should we like apply on them or we don't? What do you mean? 
so like, I mean, so usually those messages that you're going to get from colleges are just like automatic. So they just send it to anybody who's like signed up for their um, newsletter or whatever. So I would respond to those emails. It's just to give you information, um, go to their website and then check out, you know, their application process. You could maybe apply on their website or use common app, like we said before. Um, and you don't have to apply, you know, apply to whichever ones you like, because you're going to get emails from all around the world, all around the country. So, you know, maybe you don't want to go to Texas or Wyoming for college. So it just depends whichever ones you want to apply to apply there. And okay. I wouldn't respond to those emails because those are just automatic. So don't respond to those emails. Those are just to give you information and so that they can get more people interested in their college. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. So we're going to take like two more questions and then I got another private message. What do we write in resumes that we have to send to colleges? So you don't normally have to send a resume to a college. They'll have you list your activities in your community service on the application itself. Um, so that's usually, yeah, you don't have to send a resume. If you do have a resume, like I know um, we had a class at Frontier that we had to make a resume. It's nice to have one on hand if you're applying for scholarships sometimes. Um, but like I said, you don't need a, you don't really need a resume for the process. Um, as long as you have the information saved somewhere and you can just plug it in. They usually have like list your activities, your community service or any jobs. Um, so you submit it for into their own format and platform. Does that make sense? We have a question. Did we get any other private questions? No, oh, just leave your hand up, go ahead. You know, when you said about like, um, like one of your, uh, your teacher, like give you, um, like give them a letter to, to write, to write about you, like about me, yeah. how can we a choose? A letter of recommendation. Yeah. How can we choose which, which teacher should we? Okay. Um, for that, I would say pick a teacher that knows you well, like, um, one that you've had for probably like most of a school year or a full school year that they know you they know and um they know you well basically that's the most important thing and also don't pick a teacher like who you know will probably make you sound a little bad like let's say you're not the closest to a teacher if they they're not maybe if a teacher doesn't like you or you don't like a teacher um maybe don't use them just you know be careful because also they'll ask you um <clears throat> So there's an option, I think it's called FERPA, right, Reem? So they'll ask you, you can waive away your rights to see the letter of recommendation before. So you either have the option, you get to keep your rights to see the letters or you can waive them and trust that the teachers will make you sound good. So colleges, they it looks a little better if you waive your rights because it'll be like, okay, that means you know, they don't really have anything to hide. They're not worried about their letters, but that's an option. But yeah, trust teach, you know, choose teachers that you trust that will make you sound good. The ones that know you well and that, you know, they know you well enough to write a letter of recommendation that's really for you and not just a basic general, this person's responsible, this person is this, you know, a teacher that knows you well to go a little beyond that and really make a strong letter of recommendation. You can ask um, Mr. Tangway about that for tips, maybe, because he's done quite a few of those. Yeah, just ask nicely um, and uh, email me at uh, QD169169. Got me into Harvard Ream. <laughs> yeah, Tangway got us into U of M, so thank you for that, Tangway. <laughs> so, yeah, like um, how many recommendations to answer that? You just have to check for every college, they're different. Um, a lot of colleges will say we require to, but a third is optional, so you could go a little above and beyond and do the optional optional ones too. But yeah, just a teacher that really knows you well. Is your Last best question, how can we find the scholarship like on apps or how can we apply for the scholarship? You just have to um, go to the website and I guess follow the steps. I mean, Reem, how do you want to answer that? Um, you're muted. You're how do I, you apply to scholarships? Is that what you were asking? Uh, like, how can we find find like scholarship that help you gain 
more processing? Um, that's a great question, actually. So a lot of scholarships, um, I found a lot of mine through like teachers, um, family, friends, or honestly through Google. Um, my biggest thing is just be aware, make sure that they have contacts, that they, they have somewhere that you can respond, like ask them questions and they're not a scam. Um, what I did is if there was a scholarship that I wasn't sure about, I emailed it to like a teacher um, and asked her to check it for me. So that's something that you should always do because there are there's so many scholarships on Google. There's over two million dollars that don't get um, that don't get passed out for scholarships every year. So um, um, so just a matter of finding them. Um, ask your teachers. They might know of like writing contests or scholarships that are available. Miss um, Pusha sends out when you're a senior. Miss Pusha sends out like a list every few months. You just have to go through it. Like I said, applying scholarships is a lot of work. But when you get one, it's really rewarding. So you just need to go through the list, find what you're eligible for. Like some of them don't, it's like some scholarships only want to give money to students that are um, American citizens, but others want to give scholarships to students that aren't American citizens. So it's just finding the ones that you're eligible for. And it's even better when you find one that's like perfect for you. Like if you're a student who's applying, who wants to go into education, um, then that's, that's perfect for you because you can, it's specific and you can really um, be personal for it, like write a personal response to it. Um, and then, like I said, once you get into college, they'll have scholarships that um, like internally that you can apply to as well. I think Emma has her hand raised and that's gonna be our last question for today. Um, I want to ask you about um, the letter that we have to choose a teacher and write about him. When do we do that? Is there any senior year? So the you won't you won't be writing about the teacher. The teacher will be writing about you. Yeah. So is it, when you is, so, it, when, is it gonna yeah, be on so, senior year? Yeah, during your senior year, like when you're applying, um, you know, whether it's on the website or a comment or a coalition, whatever you use, it'll tell you like um add the emails of the teacher you teachers you want to recommend your teacher, you add their email and then make sure you have asked them beforehand. You, hey, Mr. Whoever, Mrs. Whoever, can you write me a letter of recommendation? Would you be willing to ask them respectfully? And if they said yes, you can add them to that and make sure you give them enough time and they will write one for you. And that's during your senior year when you're oh, okay. completing your application. You. You're welcome. I hope this was beneficial. So just let us know in the chat. And if you have feedback, you can email us um, for sure. But yeah, this is our last one of the year. so. Thank you all for coming because NHS is wrapping up soon. So this is our, our last presentation for the year. Mr. Malkic is back. Yes, I am. And I'm uh, actually, I'm, I really apologize, but trust me when I tell you, I couldn't wait. Um, oh, that's fine. <clears throat> I'm, I'm so impressed uh, because I stayed in the beginning uh, for a while. Um, I don't know how you ladies do it, but every time you do a PowerPoint presentation, I hope these kids took notes on those details too, because you impressed me. And I've I've done my share of those, but like your backgrounds and the way you do things and all that stuff, the whole presentation and, and the details, um, I mean, spot on. I mean, uh, professional, professional level. So I'm very much impressed myself. I'm glad of was any part of this great effort of yours. And uh, Absolutely amazing. So you have my utmost respect for everything you've done for the students here uh, who are going to follow your footsteps and also for us to see that uh, all the potential that you have in you. And I think there's a lot of that potential hiding in these 10th graders, right, Mr. Tangway, and uh, in our juniors and the uh, following class. So I'm really hoping that we set, you know, you guys took the lead and we helped to set some tone and, and, and kind of a, for future which is all of our duty, right? Yeah, absolutely. I recognize almost every single person here, you know, and again, like those letters of recommendation, just give me a quick heads up and give me a little bit of wiggle room to do this. Um, but I write relatively quickly, but I do need a little time. That's, it's, that's very important because there's a lot of you. We have great relationships and we're going to fight as hard as we can to get you into the school that you really want to go to. We just need a little bit of time to do it. Um, and then just like use all the resources like Reem and Rabia said, um, I just shot them a quick email. Like I'd love to follow up with them next year when they're in Ann Arbor and do another piece. So you guys can see and hear what it's like from the front lines of being a college freshman. 
Um, and again, like, and, and this is just continuing to keep this FIA community growing and evolving um, via NHS or any other method. But uh, great job. I got to swing and take care of parental details. Um, great job, people. Thanks, Tengri. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. You know, if, mm -hmm. if, if next year uh, NHS, whatever the committee that's dealing with this can, you know, bring in some of you guys who are college freshmen, you know, from maybe a few different universities and kind of do a session from you and g give them experience that from, from the students that went here, I think sometimes they just hear stories and read about things that we think it's so far away. It can only be in certain area for certain people. We fail to realize that all of us can do just as well. And, and um, I would be more than delighted to uh, 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 arrange for those things. Yeah, that would be uh, really good. We could have like a panel of people from different colleges and different programs and have them that, speak. To that's students. honestly one component that has been missing. Um, and I mean, I was in no position too much at least to, to, to talk about it before, but now I am. So I know Mrs. and I would be on board and that's something great. I mean, to, to promote good things, uh, success stories, um, even struggles, believe me, not everything will be smooth, even for the top students going in, you're gonna learn something and you're gonna struggle a little bit here and there, but that experience you guys bring back will help all of our students and, and us to see what we can do better to serve them as well. Yeah, speaking from experience, like talking to students who are at the colleges right now, it's like, it's super helpful. So I have like a family friend who goes to U of M. So you can ask them, hey, what kind of classes do you have? What, you know, how much work do you get? Anything, any kind of question you have, you can ask them. So that was something that I think would be very beneficial for them. Well, let's hope uh, uh, we we set that up and, and next year uh, keep in touch. Um, and, and we try to also reach out. I know Ms. Bushra, I know, uh, loves all of you, especially some of you that got to know her a little more closely with all your work and stuff. So we'll be in touch and try to make sure we use whatever uh, ways we have to, to uh, implement some of these things for the betterment of the school and for better opportunity for our kids. It's always nice to hear from those around you, really. It, it brings a completely different perspective to everything. Yeah. So yeah, again, thank you everybody who came today. Um, just email me or Reem um, for two or three emails um, if you have any questions. And you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. You have Ms. Bushra, Ms. Afra, Mr. Malkich, and your teachers, whoever. And yeah, you guys are welcome. Yeah. I hope that and you guys for those know, letters of recommendation, I know a few people left, but still quite a, quite a bit in here. Most teachers, you know, if, if you're doing well, will not hesitate to give you one. Just give them the heads up. Uh, I'm in this position, and, and this year I, it would be would have been hard for me, but I knew a lot of students, so I did a lot of those for them because they were my previous students. In future, once students are back in the building, hopefully, I will still have a chance to speak with a lot of them, get to know a lot of them through other ways when I when I'm visiting the classrooms and whatnot so I'll know exactly who's doing well where I can see their character see the, the the good things they're doing I'll hear from teachers so even myself I'm more than willing to um, write those for students um, put my name on it so, so long as I know I can back up what I'm saying about them that's all yeah it'll be uh, better for you guys because hopefully you'll be in person school so you can um really connect with teachers in person and make those connections instead of online where nobody really knows you that well through a computer screen. Do colleges do online? Yes, that's named. There, there are programs online. Okay. Yes. There are, yeah. That's what um, that's 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 another thing uh, that you mentioned, uh, Ravia. Uh, you mentioned, you know, you guys were this whole year uh, virtual last year got snatched away towards the end virtual. And so this whole thing that has been done and all this effort, when I heard about your effort about the SAT and how much time was put in work, it's really amazing. Uh, that's why I, I always advocated at least